You're listening to the Outdoors Channel. We want to be free. We yeah. Be free. Who? What? The work of a genius. I think it's a splendid idea. Hello and welcome back to the Outdoors Channel and our first sea kayak podcast. In this program, Simon Willis will be chatting to Chris Dennehy way up there on the island of Barra about kayaking and what exactly the area has to offer. But first, let's get in the mood with some boating music. I've had a little bit of a dig round the Podsafe Music Network and found something by Phantom Freeway entitled Riverboat. Down in New Orleans 
Hello and welcome to the first Sea Kayak podcast for the Outdoors channel. I'm Simon Willis, and as this is the first, I wanted to be somewhere special. So, this is coming from almost the last inhabited island at the southern tip of the Outer Hebrides. I'm in Castle Bay Harbour on the Isle of Barra. I feel very lucky because this part of Scotland's Western Isles is a prized destination for sea kayakers. Today, we're going to find out what are the must-do routes from Barra. We'll pick up local knowledge about tides and weather, plus practical information about organising a trip, how to get here, renting kayaks and kit, where to stay and where you can and can't camp. And if you want a full-service kayak holiday with superb food, we'll also hear about that too. Because a little earlier, I sat down with the man who runs Clearwater Paddling out of Castle Bay in Barra. He's Chris Dennehy, and he told me what makes paddling here so special. The best thing about Barra has to be the combination of the beaches, the uh, colour of the water, the shallow sand, the water with the turquoise seas... There's quite a lot of specials about Barra. The other specials are you have an east coast with hundreds of islands, fantastic protected paddling, contrasting with the wild west coast where the Atlantic more often than not comes crashing in. And from Barra you have a springboard down to the southern isles, which includes Pabe, Burnery, Sandry and Mingley, which perhaps outside St Kilda is the finest paddling in them, um, certainly which I believe is the finest paddling in the UK. There's a real feeling here, isn't there, that you you really are right on the end of, of the world, it feels like at times, actually, when we were out today. Well, yeah, when you've got a five-hour ferry or a, a flight out yeah, and you've got nothing between you and Canada, you know you are on the edge. And every trip, generally, is fairly exciting in one way or another. Yeah, you're on your own. You've got one lifeboat in Castle Bay. Apart from that, you really are on your own. Well, let's just talk about getting here because we um, we had an amazing flight here. We we came from Glasgow to Ben Bekula. Fortunately, we had air miles. But you land on the beach. I know people come from all over the place just to do that landing on the beach that the flights can't run at certain times. You can't bring too much stuff with you, but that's been great because you've managed to outfit us. But most people, I should imagine, come by ferry. And that looked really expensive if you're going to bring a car because it's like over £200 for two people if you're going to bring all the car and all, all the luggage and everything. But I should imagine that... Can, can, do they let you just... Try trundle your boats on or carry your boats on the Caledonia McBrain ferries? Yeah, you can. It's um, You don't have to book. They basically charge double the price for a bike. It's, I, think it's around ten, I think it's around £10 to uh, get a f- kayak over. Five hours, that's the main drawback, but once you're here, you can just wheel it off. You're on the harbour and you can go straight out and you can head out. This year, we've probably seen 30, 40 kayaks coming off a ferry. People pack up straight over to Vatasi or beyond camp first night and they're away either down to Mingley or up towards Uist. Well, actually, they're missing a trick because I would have said the first place to come would have been to here because you've got a great hostel, right? You can't say this, but I can. <laughs> and it's right on the waterfront and you've got this new bit next door, which really is good. We've used hostels in most parts of Scotland and this really is one of the best. You've got a fantastic view. You can launch, a bit of a steep bit down to the sea there, but you can launch quite easily from here. Uh, and even if it was only your first night, it would, be a good, it would certainly be a good place to stay. But wild camping's all right around Barra, is it? That is perhaps another absolute bonus for Barra is you can basically camp anywhere you like and there are absolutely stunning campsites. Wild, obviously. Some of them maybe have tricky landings, but once you've landed, fantastic landing. Fantastic beaches. Uh, be- well, be- the beach is obviously easy landing, fantastic campsites, some fantastic headlands with hundreds of little skerries around at low tide. We camp maybe every other week. We'll see otters, we'll see seals, obviously, a lot of wildlife to see and obviously the camping bit makes it that much better because you're out there in the evenings when the tide tends to obviously certainly the sea slacken down um how often do you see wildlife here and what sort of things do you see well we're out 20 weeks of a year i'll guarantee every trip we take we'll see a seal if not 100 seals the bonus the sort of big five i guess is we'll, a otter they're out there just got to be there right time right place we see golden eagle this year we've seen minke whale, we've seen dolphins all around the boats, basking sharks. Um, unfortunately we missed it, but a pod of orcas were sailed past Vatasi and Barra last week as well. So those are perhaps the most common sightings, and on top of that you might see a porpoise now and again. If you come here as, as a team, what are the must-do paddles on Barra? It might help to have a map in front of you for this if we're, if we're describing it. We've got one. We basically run trips every week, and the highlight of people's week every week and I would agree with them 
close to Barra is the trip around Sandre. You have Barra connected to a causeway to Vattersea, and just south of Vattersea lies the fantastic island of Sandre. It has what I would rate one of the top ten beaches in the world. It has the Atlantic coast on one side. It has a, a lovely sound between Vattersea and Sandra, which is, seems to be a good basking shark territory, and it's just a classic circular tour, easy reach for most competent paddlers. A nice day tour out. You do that from Castle Bay. You can do it from Castle Bay. We quite often drive to Vattersea, cut out the sort of return repeat bit, and just do a circle from the South Beach and Vattersea. That would be my number one paddle in the Barra region. Number two would be going up to the other end of Barra, up to the north end, up to Elegry, which talking my top 10 is probably one of the top 10 views on a right day sunshine in turquoise sea I would rate as one of the top 10 views in the world personally speaking and their fantastic trip around Fuji and Fure two beautiful little islands shallow waters turquoise sea white sandy beaches and the second island Fure a brilliant wildlife island on the north shore we've seen up to 150 common seals and around on the southern shore, it's great. It's 80, at most 80 grey seals. Um, between the uh, the sound between Fude and Elegre, we've been really lucky to have encounters with dolphins, which, as I say, it's really shallow water. We've had dolphins all around the kayaks, turning, twisting underneath, looking up, upside down. Stunning spot. Do you ever go on the west coast? We do occasionally get on the west coast. Um, obviously, you're out in the Atlantic on the west coast, so you have to pick the right weather for it unless you've got that kind of experience which you enjoy the um, wild stuff a, a corner which really is not in pe- people you never see people out there I'm amazed it's not been discovered by the climbers huge cliffs fantastic caves a nice little stack and that's coming out from the causeway between Barrow and Vattersea you run out west turn right at the end and you're in some fantastic scenery big cliffs as I say and some huge caves you can get you can get a hundred kayaks and turn them around and come back out again. But you do have the big swell out there as well. What do you need to know? What are, what are particular dangers that just looking at a map or reading a pilot you wouldn't be automatically aware of? There's not Out here, being such a huge sea area, not a huge land mass, we don't have a huge amount of tides. The, the strongest tides run in the sound, say, between Vatican and Sandry, where you may get up to four knots in a spring tide, which isn't a huge amount of tide. But more than the tides is the weather. It's being stuck out in the Atlantic. It's just upon you before you know it. And um, you look at a forecast, you think, I've got a good forecast. And you go back four hours later and look at the same forecast, and it's totally changed. So it's the wind against tide can be upon you before you know it almost. If you plan to go down to Mingley, which is... Some people could do it in a day van back, but it would be a complete waste, I feel. You, a three-day trip is the minimum, I would have said. But you could get down to Mingley and thinking that you've got a fantastic forecast. By the time you wake up the next morning, you realise it's uh, vanished. What about that trip right down to the bottom there, to Barra Head? I think that's in Doug Cooper's book as being a, a kind of one, of one of the 50 best in Scotland. Um, uh, how, how easy is that one to do? I imagine you need perfect weather for that. Uh, as an outfitter, it tends to be a trip which I do with friends rather than with, as a business trip. We, we, every year we try and do that one and we'd like to do it, but it, it's a committing trip. It's, it's a good distance down there. You've got nice little, well, you've got beautiful little islands on the way. You, you go via Vatersea, then you've got Sandra, as I've described. You've got Pabe, which has got the most incredible beach. That is number one beach I've ever seen. And then obviously you've got Mingley and Burnery behind it. But if anybody was thinking of coming down there and thinking, yeah, we'll definitely do that, you have to be really alert for the fact the weather could completely force you to change your plans. Absolutely. If you've, if you've got your mind set, I'm going to Mingley, and you just do it regardless of the weather, well, you may well be stuck on an island for five, six days. It, if you arrive in Castle Bay and the weather's not right, well, you've either got to be slightly... Um, you've got to be extremely committed to it and expect extremely bad weather, or you say, right, no, we'll turn northwards. But if you get the weather, fantastic trip. Tell me about clear water paddling. What's the sort of trips you run if all this frightens the, the life out of people and think, oh, no, Barrow's not for me, there is an alternative, yeah? Well, yeah, we run Clearwater Paddling, which we run week-long tours, we'll run camping-based trips, we'll run accommodation-based trips out of our lodge, and we'll do a combination of anything. Our trips are generally geared at people who are 
new to the sport want to try it for the first time or maybe there's one partner who's well into kayaking and the other sort of wants to try it out so really our sort of aim is to let people really enjoy themselves we're not there to scare them silly we're not there to push it if it's a particularly unpleasant day for kayaking we don't go kayaking so we we'll, we'll go out and we want people to really enjoy it and then take it up as a sport and we run trips 20 weeks a year this year most of the trips around the area we've described already do good food i'm told the food is absolutely superb we have a local crofter who and sarah who has her own pigs her own lambs her own bees and her husband's a fisherman to boot so the food is absolutely fantastic i have to say i never get any <laughs> <laughs> that's a good recommendation tell me what it's like here out of season uh, is there opportunity to come here maybe stay with stay at your hostel and, and, and do some trips here out of season maybe at the last minute you know you look at look, see the weather forecast think that that should be okay and get the boat out of open on a friday maybe we do we do get occasional people who are just over for weekend it, as i say the five hours does make it quite a trauma to get here especially in the winter but the, the sort of tourist season in the uh, Western Isles generally, but certainly in Barra, comes sort of start of October. You may as well close shop. We're always open, but mm. the, the island's deserted. You get some nice weekends, and you get a lot of bad ones. So it's very much, you've got to have a very good forecast if you're thinking of coming over for a long weekend. But certainly if you get out there and you get a good weekend, as I say, there's a lot of love, beautiful paddling just close by to Castle Bay. So mm. get the right weekend, well worth it. Is October the time of the year that you finally manage to get out on the water for yourself? Or do you get enough of it during the year? <laughs> we do a lot of paddling from May through to October. We, 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 we try doing different trips each year. Unfortunately, once we get past that period, the weather does get fairly chronic, so opportunities are fairly far and few between. So, But we're looking at some different destinations for winter, which includes sunshine, so... That's my aim. That was Chris Dennehy of Clearwater Paddling on Barra, who has to have one of the best jobs in the world. My thanks to him and to you for listening. If you have any feedback, if you'd like to hear different kinds of interviews, please let me know. Go to seakayakroots.com and you'll find plenty of email buttons there. I'm Simon Willis. Until next time, goodbye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that just as much as I did. And my thanks must go to Simon Willis for compiling the show. Of course, any comments, as he said, please contact him via email or leave us a message on our voicemail service, which is 020-8133-9434. Until our next sea kayaking podcast, happy paddling!
9434. Call me anytime you want. This podcast is produced and hosted by The Outdoors Channel. To find out more, visit theoutdoorschannel.co.uk.